uh, although there remains a lot of open questions in my mind, at least. So I'll just throw out a few things that stood out after these really interesting talks that we heard in the session. Um, so one issue that I, you know, personally bothers me is um, the issue of really whether the, the gravity theories, the non-local theories are finite or not, and whether the unitarity, which, you know, so there has been a lot of progress in terms of proving unitarity in maybe toy models or scalar field theories, but gravity is different because, because of gauge invariance, you have these um, uh, vertices which, which have exponential growth. Uh, and so it's much trickier to figure out whether you ultimately end up with a finite theory or not. And moreover, because you have to have these prescriptions to get around the unitarity problem, how does that affect uh, the finiteness? So potential connection between uh, you know, having a finite or renormalizable theory and unitary, because the prescriptions for doing the integrals are no longer the same. Uh, no matter what you do, there are tricks involved. So since there were a lot of questions on this, um, uh, Modesto and I know Alex, um, they have worked, uh, you know, in at least the toy models. Um, so maybe I'll throw that out first um, to, the, to them or anyone else who, um, can shed some light on what they think um, about the fate of UV singularities um, as in, in gravity theories or other gauge theories. Oh, um, I mean, I mean uh, may, may I make a comment? Yeah, go ahead. Well, I mean, uh, uh, um, about uh, UV singularities, you mean divergence loop divergences, or you mean? Uh, yeah, like I, I remember when I did some calculations. What happened was in a toy model, uh, you know, like toy scalar model, but we ensured that the vertices vertices have similar kind of divergences, uh, while the propagators have suppressions. We found that although yeah. you know, if you just do a counting argument, you may think that things are finite, but when you look closely into actually calculating these diagrams, it's yeah, not yeah. easy. And, yeah, you know, know long ago, you know, for a long ago, it depends on the kind of uh, form factor you take. If you take exponentials, you have this issue. If you have the same, uh, the same uh, exponential in uh, the, vertex, the vertex and uh, at the same time uh, in uh, the uh, propagator, because you can have this ratio of exponentials and the ratio of exponentials is not ratio, like ratio of polynomials. But if you take an asymptotically polynomial uh, form factor, then you can avoid this issue in gravity or gauge theory. On the other hand, uh, in scalar theory, you can just uh, take a model in which uh, the non locality is only in the vertices, and you can use even exponential form factors because uh, uh, you don't have this ratio between uh, propagators and uh, vertices, as far as, you know, as far as we, we know now. So that's the, the main difference. Okay, let, let Actually, to me, the issue is much more involved. Yeah, go because ahead. You Alex. see, you see, in principle, yes, you can play with form factors. It's true, and you can take them polynomial. But then, yeah. on top of just taking them polynomial, you have to arrange somehow that uh, your three vertex and four vertex, vertex connected by word identity by unitarity all play together a nice game. And uh, I'm not sure it's very easy stuff to show in theory like gravity. Uh, yeah, Even though you can, in principle, can do matching for two by two, sc two, two and two scattering, as you claim you do. Uh, I'm not sure we are very close to make it in a very general framework. Sorry. Yeah, this is a consequence of word identity. So gauge invariance is preserved. So sure, at any loop order, you can prove. You can take a chapter two of book Binder, and there you can find all the details for any theory, including non-local theory, analytic non-local theories, of course. Um, that's work. I mean, uh, there is no difference between these proofs by 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 Fabio, Pius, uh, Sen, Efimov, and others in scalar theories or more involved theories. And you have just to implement also properly the 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 word identity. 
<clears throat> nice. As fact as I understand uh, what Sirto is mentioning, it's closely related to what Terry was trying to ask. The point is that just power counting in a tree graph uh, naively gives you that any tree graph would diverge because num number of vertices is greater than number of propagators, and it should be very tricky consolation. The, the, the number of vertices is always smaller than the number of propagators. Only at one loop you have the same. Because no, no, I'm, I'm speaking about three level. L minus one. So no, no, uh, I'm speaking about three level, Leonardo. I'm speaking about three level where you have three two to the, and one It depends on the theory you consider, but if you take a theory which has only Ricci square and R square, you have the same amplitudes of Einstein in per theory. If you introduce also Riemann square or Y square, you can have differences, <clears> and uh, and then we can uh, we have to remake the computation. Uh, Katie, why don't you, because I remember, you know, you had some concerns, maybe we should clarify this because personally, I, I, you know, I'm not sure about this argument because I, I found that it's going to be very tricky to, uh, what, what, what argument, sorry, sorry, I missed the point. What argument? I mean, this argument that you're mentioning that you have, I mean, I, I have not really personally worked with these polynomial, um, form factors. Uh, so my experience has been with exponentials, but there at least I found it to be pretty tricky to uh, navigate the uh, the unitarity requirements as well as the uh, you know the sub divergences um, with once you have these exponentials and how uh, how they can even change signs once you integrate. So I just wanted to bring Terry into the conversation and maybe if he's still around. Um, uh, Actually, probably... ju just a trivial comment to, to what Leonardo have said. You said about Ricci squared and Ricci scalar squared. It's okay, but if you concern about three level graphs and if you concern about maximally symmetric space time and you concern only Minkowski in your computation, then technically it's Bianchi identity, which tells you that you can take any. You can take Ricci scalar and Ricci tensor. You can take Ricci scalar and Weil tensor, can, yeah, whatever you pair what you wish. Want. You can select what you wish. And then that's the reason why I try to figure out what is the best choice for this tensorial structure. And the best choice is exactly the one in Ricci, in Ricci basis. Uh, for stability re reasons on any background and uh, for uh, unitarity and stability reasons on Minkowski. <coughs> Because no, but it's not like is what, what is better or not. Maybe you mean what is more convenient. What I mean is that they are identical. Well, what co convenient and not for technical uh, reasons. Guys, uh, just to make sure, because sorry to bring this up, but let's, let's just have everyone, it should not be just a conversation between two people, uh, because I think everyone has their uh, you know ideas and opinions. Um, uh, who else wants to join in? Um, I see, yeah, go ahead. I guess How do I? Oh, there, there are many hands. How do I? Okay, let's see. In participants, you see raised hands. Um, see, I'm not sure whether I'm the host. No, you are co-host now. You can. Uh, your, uh, what do yeah. I do? I uh, can. Can you lower uh, Terry's uh, yes, hand? Because, yes. You know, yes. He made yes. some important comments towards yes. the end. Terry, please. Oh, uh, well, coming back to this issue of the three amplitudes. I mean, this is not a question of what you know. It's a very simple question. As Alex said, simply by power counting for generic tree graphs, you see that you have always, of course, that's how it works, always more vertex factors than uh, propagator factors. And therefore, generically, all these graphs in this particular type of, of theories the way they are constructed, uh, they're going to have uh, divergent behavior at high energy, at three level, which means the classical theory okay. is not viable. So may, may I make a question, just short? What about Stelle theory? What is the three level amplitude in Stelle theory for gravity? Oh, that's, that's perfectly, uh, that theory, what is the three level amplitude in Stelle theory for gravity? Well, of course, it, it has, it has k to the fourth. Based on your argument, it should be s squared, right? Energy to the fourth. No, it's not. It's like Einstein in theory. Compute it. At long distance, at low momenta, of course. No, any scale is exactly the same of, of stainless theory. No, it's not exactly. How can it be? You have a different propagator. 
And the vertical yeah, and the vertex is still okay. Because like they can't, the they, they are contribute. And the reason, the reason, if you want to, the reason is the, what, what I said during the seminar is the field redefinition, which works as long as you don't touch the, 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 the poles, that you don't touch the spectrum. But field, if you take field, the redefinition, rapidos, field redefinition doesn't matter. If it's a theorem, an S matrix theorem, S matrix theory, that for physical on shell amplitudes, they're independent of field redefinitions. So if I compute yeah. them in, in a particular set of fields. Yeah. And indeed, what you get is independent of the field redefinition is exactly the three level Einstein Hilbert amplitude. It for cannot that. be at high energy. However, because at high energy, well, I can send you the my reference and also other references. If they other have different behaviors at high energy, how can they be the same? Oh my God, it is something very important. To me, it's not that crucial, but, but it is like that. It is very crucial. These so, theories, you know, the way they're constructed. So you don't believe that in, <laughs> in stellar theory, the amplitude at high energy scales like energy square, right? But you think it is scales like this? No, wait, it's wrong. I think, I'm wait. just talking about three level, right? Three level, three <laughs> level, of course, three level. Right, so they have different vertices and different propagators. And the and the I, I class, classically totally. classically the energy at high classically the theory has different behavior at high energy of course because it has different vertices. It's yeah. only at low energy where the higher degree sure, becomes. I show as lights in okay. which you see you you see clear, clearly that the contact terms cancel the contribution of the STU channels. The and counter the terms end, don't affect the final And you get exactly three, exactly. three level has nothing to do with counter terms. I mean, let, let's counter say terms enter on your one with level. All right. Uh, let me uh, bring in Anna. I think um, she was uh, trying to ask. Can I, can I just suggest to show some formulas during the discussion? Otherwise, it's too Fabio, uh, I already difficult. Sure to right, but. <laughs> Yes. All right. Uh, Luca, Luca, can you re, uh, lower um, Anna's hand? Uh, yes. Okay, uh, first, I would like to thank uh, to, to ask a question uh, to Leonardo. Uh, first, I would like to thank for the very nice talk, uh, and uh, I would like to say that I also want. Uh, I also like um, this proposal. Shut up and uh, and calculate. Uh, and uh, I just uh, wonder uh, the different why uh, there is a difference between uh, the answer for one loop uh, diagram with exponential form factor in uh, toy scalar theory with those uh, presented in uh, uh, my recent work with Alexei. Uh, and uh, uh, the difference maybe is uh, because um, uh, there is a computation for uh, the, the part of integral corresponding to uh, residue uh, and uh, uh, the part of the integral which is uh, which corresponds to Euclidean one is not uh, computed. Uh, at least I didn't see the, the answer. Could you comment on this? Uh, I, I, don't, I don't understand the question, honestly, but, but uh, uh, um, so the theory is a scalar field theory, right? And yes, uh, it's a scalar field theory. Actually, we computed the same as uh, you presented on slides today. Okay. Uh, and uh, I didn't find quickly uh, whether these uh, computations are published somewhere. Ah, and are not published. Are not, ah, published. not published. But, but now is re they are recording, so you can take copy. And yeah, and but um, I didn't have, have yeah. a lot of uh, time. It's, it's done by my student recently, but in the paper by uh, with, with Fabio, there are many details. Although there are not, there is not that 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 amplitude explicitly computed, and there are not that plots. This is something new, actually. But it's okay. not. Uh, very, I so, mean, it's, uh, it's, new, but it's, it's just a computer. Yeah. I mean, it's important. Yeah, yeah that's right. important. Uh, it's, it would be nice to have uh, to converge to some uh, uh, co common answer. <laughs> To have it. Uh, I mean, I, I saw your paper, even I don't remember the details, and uh, I think I agree with what, what I read there. I mean. Well, at least in this answer, they are not, and this is why the question is raised. Uh, starting with the same, uh, we end up with different, which uh, it would be great to converge to something. Yeah, we, we, can, we can check, but, but um, well, we have many different ways to check the same thing. We are, we are, we are, 
So what, what yeah, is the really blur up camera? So you are, you are able to prove that the imaginary part is the same of the local theory for at least uh, a toy model, toy scalar model for any yes. four factors. Yeah, we completely agree with about the imaginary part. If ah, we compute, uh, everything like uh, Euclidean integral analytically continued to Minkowski space, so then we obtain uh, optical theorem, uh, unitarity, and so on, very clearly. But uh, then uh, we computed also, uh, we found an, a closed analytical form for uh, real part of the amplitude, and it's it's a bit different from those you showed on slides. Which I was able to. We, we can look at the details. We have to touch them, but, but at least we have to look at the details. Maybe if you send sure. me the exact place in your paper, I, I can uh, maybe ask to some students to compare the results. Yeah, maybe, yes. Yeah. Uh, so, um, and also, yeah. since there are, I'm sorry to cut you off, but I, I do want to give everyone the opportunity. Um, how about Philip? Um, you know, uh, Luca, you have to do this. And then after that, you you may want to go yourself. Am I able to am I able to do a, sh a screen share so I can show an equation? <laughs> I mean, yes, you can, you can, you can. Let me see what happens. Uh, does everybody see the screen? Yeah. Uh, okay, good. Um, I want to make some very general comments about non-locality and converge and ultraviolet convergence. Um, and I think one, there are two themes that I've de identified in this conference, which are very important. One is how do we make these graphs finite? Uh, sorry, how do we make these graphs renormalizable? And how do we make the discontinuities across them positive? And those are in principle different, different questions. One's unitarity and the other is finiteness. The finiteness or not finiteness, uh, the renormalizability comes about by spreading out the vertices or spreading out the propagators. And basically, if you think of a, pro a vertex as going as P to a power, uh, a power behavior, and I'll, I'll explain why in a second, then this is local in momentum space and non-local in coordinate space. And in the end, I think, I can roughly say that what everyone's trying to do is to find some prescription for softening the, the ultraviolet behavior of these diagrams. Um, that doesn't necessarily affect the unitarity because that depends on the sign of the discontinuity. Now, why would I even mention this? Because there's actually a working example. It's not from gravity at all, it's from particle physics. And it's the reason that I actually got into gravity and that is that many, many years ago, Johnson, Baker, and Willie explored the question of whether QED could be finite. And what they found was, was that the vertex would, um, the, the vertex where you insert here psi bar psi into the fermion propagator, it would go like P to the gamma, and the self energy of the fermion would also go like P to the gamma. And if gamma was negative, then they would be able to soften the analog graphs in QED. Now, with them, they had a fixed point. And this, by the way, I, I should stress, this was from 1961. This is long before renormalization group. They'd already discovered anomalous dimensions. And they realized that with anomalous dimensions, they could take a renormalizable theory and make it finite. Now, what I myself did was I realized that if gamma went all the way to minus one, then the dimension of psi bar psi would go from three to two, and that would make the four Fermi interaction renormalizable. And this same condition had been discussed uh, also by Bob Holdham and many people subsequently. Uh, I was doing this in 1974, 75 approximately. So there is, the possibility in field theory, at least in flat space time, that you have some kind of fixed point, you can, you can take a vertex, you can soften it in, the, in, in momentum space, and that makes the theory non-local in coordinate space. Now, what's important about this is that this was output. Namely, this was the solution to the theory, not the starting point. So what would I think would be very nice is if, 
the proposed non-localities that people have been talking about, if they could, instead of being put in as the starting point, if they could be generated by some form of dynamics. Um, I think everybody here would be very happy if that would happen because that would lead you to some specific form of non-locality. So it looks to me as though this is the right, this is the sensible thing to do is to spread out the vertices. And if you, if you can't do them by dynamics, at least do them by hand so that you can get a grip on that theory. And certainly uh, Leonardo was even discussing, well, let's not just make uh, gravity renormalizable, let's make it finite. Namely, let's see if we can't spread out the vertex enough to get such finiteness. Now, the only comment I want to make about the unitarity is uh, everyone who looks in this field has to look at these graphs and calculate the discontinuity across them. Now, if you have the, the famous one over k squared minus one over k squared plus m squared propagator, then you'll find that the discontinuity has the wrong sign. Uh, and that's, that's a mathematical fact. But the theory that I worked on at least, there's also a contribution from the tree graph, which is not standard, and it produces the entire quantity to have a positive discontinuity when, when you take that into consideration. Now, those of you that are looking at ghosts decaying, the ghost may decay and it may, and that means that it's not in the in and out states, but it can still appear as a resonance in a scattering amplitude because most elementary particles like the delta 1238 are only, only appear in scattering amplitudes. They don't, they don't appear on shell. So preventing the ghost from going on. Uh, can, you, uh, can you summarize your discussion? Yes. Because we don't want to just have. Um, yes, yes, I'm summarized. Yes. Preventing the ghost from being in the final states does not necessarily solve the unitarity problem in, in, in a cross section. Anyway, that, those are my comments. Thank you. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, you know, I think this is an interesting idea that that you bring up about uh, having the final theory of a certain form. And of course, one way we know how to do this is to use some kind of symmetry. But, um, you know, it has been an intriguing possibility uh, uh, to see if there is some way to sort of um, ensure that no matter what kind of high derivative terms you uh, uh, put in, they have, if they obey a certain symmetry, maybe those could be preserved and that structure could be preserved. Uh, mm -hmm. But I, I do not know of any, any um, real progress in that direction, but it will be definitely nice. Um, let me move on to Luca and then maybe Bob. Um, I've seen those hands go up, but then just quickly, just to make sure that, you know, we can discuss other aspects as well. Uh, I just wanted to bring in one more thing in case people want to, um, a comment on it, which is this idea about background. And we always talk about Minkowski space time and making everything uh, nice around Minkowski, uh, but is that sufficient? And I think Alex brought this up. What about maximally symmetric space times? And I think we did show that you can construct once you go beyond just the quadratic uh, 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 curvature terms, if you have, if you add nonlinearity, you can have, um, uh, theories which are consistent perturbatively around Minkowski and the de-sitter and anti de But what about other backgrounds? Is it necessary? Um, do we really want the quantum gravity to be, to be consistent on any background and how do we even impose that? So that was another thing that always intrigued me. So I just wanted to bring that out. Um, all right, Luca, go ahead. Well, I don't know because you made other points. I don't know if you want us to stay on the previous point or to go to the new ones. Uh, what do you, um, why don't because, we say we have a few, you know, why don't you go ahead? How long do we have, by the way? Uh, well, actually, well, in, let's say that the, on paper there is a time uh, limit, but uh, in reality there is not. So in practice... Okay, then uh, why don't you go ahead, maybe we... Not, no, we I, would, I would just make a comment ahead. about uh, these scattering amplitudes in uh, stellar gravity and higher derivative, and also in mean, local theories. So I never done any computation on what uh, Modesto and uh, Modesto was saying, but from what I understood, at least reading some of the papers, okay, is that basically if you, can, for instance, if you take stellar gravity, okay, and you put as external on shell moment only the massless graviton, okay, and you take a theory like, R plus R squared plus Ricci squared, 
okay. What happens that the amplitude, okay, at three level, okay, are the same as Einstein because there is a cancellation between T plus U plus uh, uh, S plus the contact term, okay. But the thing is that you are considering only as mass, as external state, the massless on shell radicals. Now, I've never done any computation, I just write some papers, okay. All right, you can and, do because then you don't get, of course, the same. Because you don't get the same if you add the scalar on and ghost, of course. Now, in all local theories, okay, it's more complicated the story. If you put only R f of box R plus Ricci f of box Ricci, and you only put on shell massless uh, contribution, massless graviton, you still get the same because what happens is that the f of box is never variated. Uh, is never, is, there is no delta of box around Minkowski. Okay, up to that order, perturbation theory. So what happens is that basically this f of box when it's evaluated, evaluated in the in Fourier space, okay, doesn't create any uh, big problem. It can be always canceled, okay, when you sum up these four contributions. But this is only for external massless graviton, okay, and also is true and only if no no it, uh, it's true only if your uh, Ricci equal to zero is still the solution on shell. Okay, but if you put Riemann square with some f of box, this is not true anymore. Okay, yeah. and of exactly. course there is uh, no reason to exclude Riemann f of box real. But if you just no. take okay. r square, it's true, but only for massless graviton. Now I'm saying it's true because I read some papers, but I never produced computation. So, but on that I would agree with Leonardo, although I should reproduce those computation. I don't know if Terry agrees also. Uh, actually, there is a more general theorem which was proven by Anselme. Okay. Yeah, yeah, uh, I use that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, maybe you use the theorem. Okay. Well, but in the beginning, like you, I was looking for a, a phenomenological implication of Eiger derivative, and I found exactly the same results of Weinstein the theory. So okay. it was a surprise. Afterwards, I have used the theorem to, to, to figure out. What yeah, no, but the amplitudes are not really the same, just for some sector, I would say. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, they're totally different. So I think the problem yeah, yeah. that uh, Terry was saying okay. about. Uh, but we computed some, but not all of them. So yeah. I don't. So I would say the problem, the big problem in Nologati is still that we have vertices which are exponentially enhanced and uh, uh, propagated which are exponentially suppressed in Euclidean space, for instance, and we still have a big problem. And I think this is the main issue in Nologal theories anyway. So I don't know how can we deal with the problem. I mean, actually. what by an is an issue, what is the issue? But because uh, if you put just Riemann square, okay, with f of box, and you are just, of course, looking at three level, huh? it doesn't mean that this is the same yeah. entire loop, yes. okay. So yeah. even if you put Riemann square, things will change, okay? And for sure, this what uh, Terry said, there is a problem because V always win over the propagator. I mean, you have many, many graphs where we, uh, V is greater than, uh, than- No, 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 what, 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 what do you mean? What do you mean about uh, the loop amplitudes? No, no, the number of, in, of vertexes can be greater than the number of propagators, okay? It no, can give you I mean, vertices. No, no, At no. three level, yes, yes. It happens. At, at sure. three level, I mean, what are you talking about? You, no, no, just make a three level, a three level scattering. Okay. okay, and you put V vertices, okay, and E propagator. Okay, if V is greater than E, sorry, if V is greater than I, so number of internal propagators, okay. smaller okay. than the number of vertices, you have the vertices, you cannot do much. It's very simple. Well, I minus V is L minus one, right? No, 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 you're not putting any loop, you're just three level. Okay, so you, okay. You okay. cannot use any topology relation here. So you just have three level, V wins over I, and you are basically in trouble. You cannot do much. But, but Loop, what, what is the trouble? So what is trouble you is that uh, the, you have a three-level diagram, which is divergence, because you have exponential of uh, v k square minus exponential of sorry minus exponential of v k square times exponential of so minus i k square. So, so you're worrying. Oh, Luca, but k k square is on shell uh, in no. these propagators. No, no, of course not. It's just, it can be a center of mass energy, whatever, I don't know. But first of all, it depends on the theory, like you confirm. Yes. But, but, but moreover, um, so this could be also a way to rule out some theories, which since we have too many theories. First, second, uh, um, so you're worrying about the fact that the amplitude in the ultraviolet, so beyond the Planck scale, it explodes. Well, but even the einstein hilbert theory explodes. It's yeah, already but this is even, but this is even worse because it's exponentially worse. Enhanced. Yeah, it's worse, but it's yeah. bad anyway. So probability is violated. The unitarity bound is violated. However, no, if it's not good. It's a problem. That, that's it's what we want. Right? I mean, we want to have a theory which doesn't have that, that problem. I mean, we don't want to make yeah, it but worse. That, that doesn't mean that that problem is there. 
I think Terry, Terry wants to comment. Though. I think Terry but it is comment. there, Robert, uh, Leonardo. Come on, as Lucas says, if you have a generic tree graph with r mu squared in the theory, which you need it actually for normalizability or super normalizability, you cannot avoid it. Then a generic tree graph. Riemann, you, you don't have the behavior that Lucas says, which is exponentially exploding high energy behavior. We're trying to construct a good theory, you know, not a bad Sorry. theory. So first of all, you don't need a Riemann square. First of all. No, but you do. Second, Second, no, but the question is not about Riemann square. The question is about ghosts and scalarons, and, which and you if need. If you don't have Riemann square, if you just have R square, that's just a scalar field theory coupled to ordinary gravity. Yes. And so R square, R mu nu square. R square, R mu nu square, not R square, that's it. So, oh, okay. okay, fine. So then you can add Riemann square or not. If you add the Riemann square, you have a, a, a behavior in the, the, in the Planckian regime, which is even worse than Einstein Hibbert theory. However, the theory is still super normalized, sorry, still super normalizable and still asymptotically free. So the problem can be solved in a different way. So, sorry, right. yeah, if you make comment. Not talking about yeah. loops, right? Yeah, but the, they are important. The fact that it's super normalizable is exactly uh, the reason why you have the tree level uh, problems. So yes. the way the way to have a good a good a good behavior is to have what I call the canonical theories, ordinary propagators have... with vertices that are spread out, which is what Philip was saying. Then, you know, unitarity works beautifully because, you know, you've got ordinary propagators. And uh, the tree level, you know, uh, you don't have the problem because the vertices are decaying right, at large momenta by construction. Everything is beautifully and smooth. That's the only theory that works. Without no, I, don't so. that I, I, don't, I don't make comment about that kind of theory. I'm fine. I mean, I know that don't have anything against that, but, but the okay. other works too because it depends what happens I, in the usual. I wish you, I wish you were right because you know I was involved in this theory too. But I, I'm afraid I don't agree. This, this theories have fine. problems. Fine, but I don't think there are any problems because uh, so the first, the first. First, of at least this kind of problem, because the, the only issue is about the transplantian regime, which is an issue, right? like Dia said many times. So now, even if I have just Einstein in the theory, I have to look at what happens beyond the Planck scale. And then it depends. If the theory is fine, you have a conformal invariant phase, which solves the problem. If it is not fine, it's super normalizable and asymptotically free, which I don't, see how, I, I don't see, how, I, I don't agree with that. Either, how can you have a conformal invariant <coughs> theory in a theory with explicit uh, mass scales? There is no mass scale because there is the dilaton. You can introduce the dilaton. There is All no right, let me like this. No, let's move on to. Uh, there is uh, no uh, mass you, have, you have to maintain, you know, you have conformal. Oh. In the super normalized theories, you have the conformal anomalies. You Here there is no conformal conform anomaly because we prove the theory is finite. So no conformal anomaly. No, your finite I mean, I, I, is not correct with the killer things. It's not correct. No, what? The, the uh, finiteness with killers? I mean, killers yeah. just name it for friends. Yeah, All right, yeah, they they for, why, why is not correct? So prove me to show other people. Um, from, what I, from what you wrote down, discussion you can put all, all, the, all the necessary counter terms yeah. from the dimensional regularization. You simply don't put all the ones where the poles the can be proportional to the mass scale four. in the theory. You can have only four divergences. I mean, this is fundamental. I mean, textbooks, right? No. Four divergences. Can I get you, the uh, you open? Uh, uh, I, 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 I saw him uh, raise okay. his hand for a while. OK, I, I, can, I cannot. Yeah. I mean, when you have a dimensional regularization, agree. that doesn't mean that you don't see the divergences that would be there, let's say if you were to do Pauli Villars. It's true. Okay. You know, Terry, that, uh, yeah. can, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I just wanted to have everyone else's opinion as well as we move on. Because yeah, this it's can, a specific can, question that he asks, yeah. right? So, I know that this, this kind of goes on, but I think it's good to have everyone uh, also jump in. Uh, Bob, I, I've seen you uh, raise your hand for a while. I'm sorry, it took some time, but I think these are good conversa conversations. Did you want to jump in? Yeah, I mean, uh, Leonardo presented a, an, an interesting result for 
uh, graviton graviton scattering. And it seems like uh, not everyone completely agrees with that. Um, I would just like to report that I went through this calculation for stellar gravity, and he's correct. Okay. So there are there are non-trivial cancellations going on in these theories that you can't just argue about. You have to do the calculation. Thank you. That's uh, yeah. That's uh, yeah, but that's a scalar scalar grab, right? No, nobody disputes that. May I say there something? Are, there's very non-trivial cancellations between these these graphs. So you would have naively thought there was a K fourth behavior in these amplitudes, but that cancels out. Uh, Shavan, did you want to uh, say something? Yes, I have uh, two comments. So, uh, yeah, uh, but as Luca said, uh, the interstellar gravity is only true if you consider the only external state, two to two massless graviton. But there is also scalar on in the theory. We, we yes, um, I've also calculated those, and I'll report on that tomorrow. Okay, so, okay, then we discuss this point tomorrow. Then uh, there's another comment I want to make. Uh, well, it's actually uh, recently uh, I saw a paper from Sh Ilya Shapiro on counting uh, ghosts in a ghost-free theory. Basically, even if you have a non-local theory with fixing form factors, ghost-free, even Aaron Minkowski, if you consider one loop corrections due to matter fields, uh, you anyway modify the form factors, so uh, you, will end, you will have ghosts. So I think this is the something uh, maybe uh, Ilya can. Uh, yeah, I think this is something about. that I, can, uh, I would like to comment on both things if possible. Okay, so uh, first of all about these three-level diagrams, uh, I have no much experience with three-level diagrams. I know that this is not as simple as uh, people used to think. And uh, I completely believe that there may be consolations, but for me, it is not very convincing for the following, or I mean, from general perspective. And the reason is the following. Uh, three level diagrams are going to reproduce somehow classical equations of motion and uh, the solution. And we know, uh, we did some extensive uh, study of this question, let's say, that if we take a uh, cosmological background and consider uh, perturbations on the cosmological background, then in the R theory, there are no exploding modes. And in uh, the theory with uh, uh, R square or with uh, anomaly induced corrections, which are basically R square plus something, plus some scalar mode, it's known from the paper of Starobinsky of 83 that uh, there are no exploding modes. However, when we put initial seeds of uh, cosmic perturbations with the Planck, uh, frequencies, there are exploding modes. So actually, exactly as Terry said, so when you come to very high energies, these higher derivative theories behave different from second derivative theories. This is what uh, I um, know. And concerning this, uh, what uh, Sravan mentioned, yeah, if you, the, the whole wisdom of these uh, non-local models and the way to avoid goals is that uh, the equation like exponential of z equal to zero, has no roots and has no real roots or complex roots. However, uh, you have to see that this form factor, exponential form factor, has to be exactly exponential. So if you have like exponential plus p square or p square multiplied by logarithm, exponential of p square, I mean, uh, then there are infinitely many uh, complex roots. And so by the end of the day, any uh, violation of a precise fine tuning give you the theory which has why I call this the article uh, counting ghosts because they are not countable because there is uncountable number of uh, ghosts in this theory but all these ghost-like states better say are not normal ghosts they are uh, complex and they, and they are, are the first sheet and they yeah, are, yeah, the they are distributed sheet. yeah exactly yeah but but once again what I said yesterday uh, I think uh, what uh, Gia also mentioned and uh, Professor Starobinsky mentioned that uh, the main question in all this theory is not uh, unitary and not something related to S matrix. Why? Because if you have ghosts and then imagine uh, what, what ghost is doing. The ghost uh, always, uh, how to say, interacts with gravitons because it, it creates its own gravitons. It creates gravitational field. So you cannot have as matrix is the standard understanding. You have no in states, no out states, if you have ghosts. 
So in order to use this matrix with gravity, you need uh, at least uh, completely massless gra gravitational field. Okay, if you have massive modes, the S matrix approach is not safe in general. Okay, it cannot be safe in my understanding. Now, on the other hand, the main problem with the theory which has higher derivatives is the stability of classical solutions. Okay, and this is quite interesting. This somehow explored, but not 100%, I would say. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, that Thank was. A, 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 um, should we move on? I I think I have. Um, you know, most people. Jean Luca, uh, did you want to jump in? And if after that, maybe we move on to a different question, uh, something like the background. Um, you know, what happens? Uh, do we actually really want the th a theory of quantum gravity? Do we even care um, that it be sta uh, it, it be stable or unitary? around arbitrary background, because it could be that the background itself is unstable and all that the ghosts or tachyons do is to indicate that it moves to a stable background. I do not know. So this maybe people have thoughts on that, uh, but I'll just want to give one last um, one last question on, on this topic. John Luca, did you want to? Yeah, um, um, I mean, uh, if you want to, it depends on what game you want to play. If you wanted to do uh, quantum gravity as a perturbative uh, quantum field theory, then uh, it's no surprise that uh, um, the stability depends on the background. I mean, even at the classical level, there are many, many papers uh, about uh, actually cosmological perturbations. So it's a, a totally different setting uh, where uh, um, it's shown that on a free or meso background, uh, uh, for instance, higher the derivatives of, of FRR models of many others uh, showing stabilities uh, which uh, do not exist on Minkowski. And in general, whenever I've, I've seen uh, um, quantum gravity as a perturbative QFT, people uh, usually just care about Minkowski because that's uh, the background where you make uh, um, field theory in a local inertial frame. Now, if, uh, uh, if you're worried about uh, uh, background dependence, then you should move on to different tools, I, I believe, like a functional recognition group approach or uh, other uh, things like uh, um, triangulated path integrals uh, as in CDT or uh, group field theory. Well, there, there are many other or ca canonical quantization. So I, to me, it, I, I wouldn't uh, um, insist in having a theory stable in all the backgrounds. Uh, if I want to do perturbative QFT. So uh, at least this is my uh, my point of view. I mean, if you ask it to cosmologists, uh, they will tell you, yeah, I mean, it's obvious that on a different on different backgrounds, so you will find different types of instabilities. So um, to me, it's not really an issue. Because when I want to do perturbative QFT, I go on Minkowski, because that's where I should compute my Feynman diagrams. All right. Um, and I see two hands, Anish and uh, Gia. Uh, Anish, did you want to make a comment? And then we'll go to. Hey, uh, sorry, I, I, my, my com comment was not with respect to this instability, but uh, rather on uh, what uh, Philip was uh, dis discussing. So maybe, maybe we can come back. Okay, all right. Um, Gia, do you want to go ahead? Uh, yes, thank you. So um, actually, I wanted to comment on what you said uh, the, the 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 new new topic that you opened sure. uh, on, on that. So I, I don't know. I don't want to cut any, anyone if if they want to make the, the comment about the previous one. But but no, uh, th this issue about the uh, about whether uh, we have to insist that uh, a, a, a fundamental theory of gravity necessarily is uh, well defined on arbitrary background. Um, I mean, my view is that actually more restrictive is the theory and more background it, it, it rules out is the better, okay? Uh, so um, I think, so one of the great things that I, I, I find about s matrix theory, in particular about string theory, that is extremely predictive about uh, non-existence of the sitter, eternal the sitter as a vacuum. And that's a great advantage of the theory. Uh, so, um, so yeah, that was my point of view. So, if, so therefore, if there is a theory of quantum gravity, whatever it is, it could be high derivatives, could be um, standard uh, 
more like standard uh, uh, Einstein GR or st st standard st string embedding or some non-local modification. So more, more, more background this theory kills as long as it doesn't kill everything. So, so that as long as we can still survive, uh, I think it's better because then in this way, theory is more predictive. And uh, yeah, I think that, that that will be my point of view. Actually, Ed Witten said once you know, very nicely that the, the reason why we make progress is because most of the things do not work. If, if everything would work, we would never make progress. And, and I, I fully agree and that, that that's also my point, point of view. Uh, that's yeah. a very interesting take. I, it never occurred to me. So you're saying it's not only we should, the theory should be such that it's not only a theory about the dynamics, but also the theory about the vacuum. Uh, that's so right. Both, yeah, so the consistency should find us both both the stuff. Um, yeah, that, that's interesting. Now, one comment I had, because I, I've done some work on this, um, is so with respect to these non-local theories, what happens is, so if you start off with a completely general covariant theory, which doesn't have two, uh, two curvature, but you know, non-linear stuff, then as you go to these different, we only looked at you know, maximally symmetric spaces, d seater anti d seater Minkowski, then the limits to these different you know, uh, quadratic actions become different. So, so now if you further, if you did impose, suppose you did care that, okay, I also want my anti deceder my gravity theory to be consistent on anti deceder what happens is it starts to impose constraints, not only on these quadratic terms, but also the higher, the nonlinear terms. So I always thought that maybe this is a way that cons requiring consistency might be a way of actually constricting the theory, constricting the theory itself, not only at the quadratic form factors, but beyond that. But so, you know, that was one of the reasons why I, why I asked this question. But yeah, I, I see your point uh, as well. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that would, I, I, would, I would fully agree with that point of view because I mean, that, that, that's also my, my point, point of view. For example, anomalies are a great example of how theory mm -hmm. restricts through consistency. So because there are anomalies, we know that we cannot, we cannot just simply put arbitrary set of fermions in the standard model. Actually, anomaly, in a sense, it explains, uh, almost explains charge quantization, et cetera. So yeah, my, 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 my view is that, that the more restrictive is the theory, better. It's a better theory, so. Great. Um, yeah, anyone else? Let's see. I um, make, can I make a quick comment on uh, yeah. GSP? Yeah, so, um, so, uh, so my point is that, yes, uh, what you're saying is that uh, string, I mean, string, 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 string theory may rule out some of the vacuum, but uh, from a phen phenomenological point of view, and also uh, there are some recent studies in string theory that one can prove that if, even if we allow a vacuum, which is not that we see today, and if it's metastable, because a uh, stand, stand, standard model vacuum is, met, is met, metastable, right? So we can tunnel from that vacuum to the um, stands, I mean, uh, uh, the, the vacuum that we observe today, still we, sh we should be good, right? I mean, we should not be ruling out all vacuums, but metastable vacuums may still be allowed as long as they, I mean, just, just from the experience from the standard model point of view. I mean, just, just a point, just a curious. Uh, actually, that's a very interesting question. And so what, what emerges is that also somehow metastability has an issue with this matrix. Uh, maybe there are some very special cases in which metastability is so fast that you can you can you can you can you can, you can tunnel out or do something on a on a relatively short time scale. But uh, it looks like that metas for example, the sitter metastability is again as bad for the S matrix as as simply a, a, a stable the sitter. And the reason is uh, that even if the sitter is metastable. Uh, there always will be a, an, actually a, an infinite volume of Hubble patches that are in the sitter. And therefore, there will be no way to synchronize clocks and have a globally defined time to define S metrics. So therefore, for example, metastable the sitter is as bad as for, for, for the S metrics as, 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 as stable the sitter. Um, so yeah, so for, from the S metrics perspective, as, as long as the sitter is concerned, the restriction is that there should not exist a Hubble patch that survives longer than the quantum break time. Because if it survives longer than that, then, then it's in conflict with the, with, with the S-matrix formulation. And uh, so that's what emerges. Now, the issue with from tunneling 
two anti-deceiter is more is a little bit more more, more subtle and uh, so they are okay i don't want to enter details but it's also very interesting uh, it has not been settled fully whether it whether it's okay to have some tunneling vacuum from uh, minkowski type uh, to anti-deceiter uh, looks like also a little bit problematic now there is no problem with that type deceiter vacuum so for example for, for sure in string theory there is no issue with Minkowski vacua separated from anti-deceiter vacua by the barrier, which is uh, Coleman de Lucia bound, which says why it's Coleman de Lucia suppression bound. Th th then there is no problem. So this is a perfectly consistent test matrix uh, theory. And about the rest is, yeah, the story is a little bit. Uh, little bit can, you, can, you, can, you uh, can, I, can I move on? Uh, sorry, yeah, yeah, I need, uh, uh, Alex, um, did you want to say something? Uh, yeah, it was something to say, actually, to continue what Gia started to say. Indeed, you see, I in my talk, at least, I didn't claim that I really oppose the idea that VACO are not well defined and we have ghosts. And maybe it's a great point of view that we can such way kind of rule out a lot of situations. But I also agree that, uh, I mean, I believe you also can agree that for quite a while we already live in nearly the sitter space and this measured in billions of years, you know. So at least this should give some constraints on the model because if this deceiver is unstable, it's still a rate of decay is quite slow. So this should definitely give us some information about how this form factors are constructed because they are responsible for producing ghosts and their masses and their respective effect on the model. So yeah, absolutely correct. Yeah, I think that's, that's what... Uh, so from uh, either perspective, it is important observation, I believe that we should have, I mean, I believe that we cannot satisfy all the backgrounds to be ghost free, at least one will be bad, or maybe it's following gear, a lot of backgrounds will be bad and only Minkowski is good, but we know some set of backgrounds, like for example, uh, I don't know, uh, nearby of some black hole, some region around black hole, it's supposed to be reasonably stable with lifetime of a galaxy. So centrally symmetric metric also should be quite uh, decently stable in this setup, whatever we like it or not. Sure, yeah. No, no, sure. And this should give constraints constraints and primarily here constraints on the form factors, the crux right. of the model. That's right. Yeah, but um, um, Alex, you must remember because we did this together. Um, so if you look at, again, starting from, we could construct <laughs> nonlinear actions with infinite derivatives, which are such that it, they are consistent in arbitrary, uh, deep, you know, arbitrary maximally symmetric space times. You could do it. You couldn't do it if you just start out with quadratic terms, but you could do no, it. No, no, you see, it's, it's a bit different issues. You say that indeed I can add our Q part to the force, whatever terms and make a lot of things nice. This I agree, but you also agree that I will not be able to make nice all possible backgrounds or maybe yeah. even not all needed backgrounds. So as such, I most likely will left uh, at the end of, we'll be living at the end of the day with theory where some backgrounds are not so good. So for me, it was kind of a logical jump, like why not to stop at R squared? Because at R squared already a lot of things are nice. Renormalizability is almost there, you know? And jumping to R cube just because of some tricky background. Uh, so the question is, does it worse it, uh, better to say? But I agree yeah, with you I mean, that we I, can. I agree, yeah, that, that's, that's precisely the point. So, so in other words, if you have a minimal, if you, if you are minimalistic and you have minimal uh, formulation of your theory, let's say to, up to R, R square, you said something, which <coughs> explains what you really need to know that is, is, uh, doesn't contradict to observations, uh, but then it rules out uh, a lot of other things. Uh, it's, it's, in, it's interesting to pause and stop there and, and see, because that's the most restrictive as I said, I mean, more, more restrictions you get from the theory is better because in this way uh, you, you have a powerful selection criteria uh, and you can predict things. Um, All right. So, yeah, this is I totally uh, agree. Uh, I, I saw, just to get someone new, uh, Andre, did you uh, want to say something? 
Yeah, yeah. Maybe since I again I do not know the time. Uh, you know, it seems like a, a uh, free thing, but perhaps we should decide to. Yeah, I would say let's do this way. We put uh, a deadline. I mean, let's say a time limit in twenty five minutes. Okay, but so we stop. Let's say, officially the discussion. But if someone want to stay in Zoom, uh, we can uh, keep uh, going. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Let's say yesterday we finished uh, at four forty-five our time. That means we have fifteen minutes. Okay. So. So in fifteen yeah, minutes. Yeah. Like, uh, let's take a maybe a couple more questions and then we can okay. call it a day and everyone yeah. can go. Uh, all right. So fifteen minutes. Let's say okay. Fifteen minutes. Sure. Andre, did you want to say something? Yeah. Yeah. I just uh, want to get back to the problem of this matrix versus another setup. So uh, what is the S matrix setup in field theory? Uh, this is an in-out problem. So you fix the initial vacuum and you fix the final vacuum. And of course, there is a possibility that there is no uh, physical history interpolating between the initial state and the final state. That's what uh, Guy is suggesting. But this does not mean that the uh, nature with some prescript initial vacuum cannot evolve forever, but it simply evolves to some other state. So uh, in contrast to what uh, uh, Gear is suggesting, I would like to solve the Schrodinger equation. Not the S matrix. Uh, so Andre, we can take this debate over the problem. official time. After the official time, we can, we, I, I can, we can, we can continue forever with this. Uh, but but uh, but, uh, but you, you well, know, just to, you know, yeah. this question of the which trading and solving trading equation you cannot solve. Whether ghosts it. destroy or not the destroy the background, this is a dynamical question. This is not, you see, uh, the system evolves, and if the ghost mode ev evolves by its back reaction, it just destroys the background. And what is the background after all? And, background Andre, is just a mean value. Yeah. Andre, you describe the, the initial issue, quantum state. You let it evolve. The, the issue, yeah, the issue is that the S in 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 formulation of string theory, S matrix plays at least double role. It's a computational tool, but it is also a formulation of the theory. Now, if you come up with formulation of string theory or quantum gravity that is based on solving Schrodinger equation, I would love it. No, no problem. Then we can discuss. So what do you want to say that in string theory, there is no uh, Schrodinger equation set up? I think there is, simply it is not developed. Why don't Maybe. you develop it? <laughs> uh, yeah, <why> I'm <laughs> not so qualified in string theory. <laughs> this is the main reason why. Okay, but let's I'm continue sure. this debate over the official time because, yeah, I mean, this requires a, 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 a lot of, uh, yeah, a lot of back and forth. Cauchy problem, what, 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 uh, what actually uh, embraces all phenomena and a scattering uh, matrix uh, approach embraces only a part of physical phenomena. That's, that's the thing that formulates a theory. You, you see what I'm trying to say? I'm trying to say that the, for, the theory is formulated in that way. Beyond that theory doesn't exist because you don't know what it is. The theory is formulated uh, in terms of the rules of the S matrix, period. It depends, it depends on so, what you understand under, under the formulation of the theory. That's the only formulation always, existing. Like in quantum mechanics, you, you, you define the Hamiltonian, you define physical There variables. is no Hamiltonian in string theory. Okay, I, I don't know, there is no Hamiltonian, there is no world identity, nothing. The formulation of the theory is based on S, S matrix, period. That, that's how theory is formulated. <laughs> and, and such no. a theory cannot give you a vacuum on which S matrix is not defined. Because this that would contradict very, to very itself. very restricted, restricted setup, in my opinion. And I'm that's saying like, more restricted, yeah. But that's great. That's the great thing about string theory, that it's very restrictive. Uh, that's my uh, point of view, OK? <laughs> Eddie, uh, did you want to uh, make some comments? Who? Uh, you. I mean, I thought oh, okay. you raised your hand. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, I mean, to say that uh, string theory is very restrictive is an oxymoron. I mean, the theory supposedly has uh, five to the 500, whatever uh, states and landscape. Uh, though recently, most of the landscape seems to be go going away, which is a good thing. But it's a highly non 
Not <laughs> no, sorry, not recently. Sorry, not recently. For for, mm -hmm. for several years, this is what we have been arguing that there is no Sitter vacuum in string theory. Okay. And therefore, I mean, of course, you can assume whatever you want. If you assume that okay. there are in, any, in, any, in any case, in any case, that's the, the date is not the, pro the problem, right? But the theory has been very non predictive. Uh, anyway, sense. we moved to, to a different, to a different uh, topic. I want to go back to what uh, Ilya said uh, concerning, you know, this uh, higher derivative. So, this, uh, so how you theory. define predictivity and in, for, for which parameter? I don't understand. We were discussing a very particular story. We were discussing the sitter. In that story, theory is predictive. Uh, so when you say theory is not predictive, theory cannot be predictive in every single parameter in every single circumstances. That never happens. But uh, I mean, the, there was a particular issue and there it's predictive. So uh, that, that, that's all I'm saying. Sorry to interrupt you. Yes, you were addressing different questions. Uh, <laughs> Uh, concerning the theories with uh, where you uh, sandwich uh, in higher, deri higher derivative uh, uh, Riemann tensor structures, uh, non-local terms. And uh, that's the issue that uh, Ilya uh, brought up, which I think technically is, is very important. And that is that these theories require very uh, careful fine tuning, which is an unstable fine tuning because every time you do, let's say, uh, put in another field or you uh, do another uh, loop uh, correction, uh, it has to be adjusted. If you don't have this uh, fine tuning exact, then you create, the theory becomes totally uh, uh, physically uh, uh, non-viable because you create immediately an infinite number of non-physical uh, poles because of the entire functions involved. Uh, and this will be, you know, complex poles all over the physical sheet. And well, let me course... just comment on this. I understand, and this is a very important point. Um, but we, um, uh, quite some time back, I think with Joe Capusta and uh, Jose Sembrano, we, we did some work on field theory, uh, scalar field theory, Phi four field theory, finite temperature calculations. And what we found, so this was- But what was the Lagrangian for this field? Theory? The Lagrangian was something like the periodic stuff, or you know, phi e to the power minus box phi. Um, or I, actually we did both. We also did a string field theory like thing where I have- a no, no, but, but both box. interaction and propagator. What was the, what was the-, the, uh, the the interaction was, you know, five to the power four. We also, I think, we considered five to the power four, and mm -hmm. uh, Lagrangian was. We considered both cases in a couple of different papers. We started with phi, like the periodic strings, phi e to the power minus box phi, and the other one was phi e to the power minus box times box plus m squared. So, so you're, you're not talking about the problematic theories we're talking about. You're talking about a canonical, what I call a canonical non-local theory. Which doesn't have these problems. You're talking no, about a different, no, a different set, set of no, theories. But you are, the problem that you are mentioning does show up here. So what happens is, is again, if you do, let's say, any loop calculation, uh, we we were at that point we were interested in finite temperature calculation because we wanted to see this adequate and conjecture about uh, t doing. Was the theory finite or not? The theory was finite, but no. what happens is. As, as you are saying that you do start getting contribution to say the mass square term, phi square term, which then you could imagine would mess up this whole argument about you know, having no poles because now you develop these, these infinite set of poles. Now it's interesting but, that these poles- But it's a finite have, shift, right? It's a finite shift. You don't need a counter- It's a finite shift, yes. It is yeah, a finite- well, That's shift. a different thing though. Right, right, but yeah. still, there is a there is an issue. So what we decided to do, and it did seem to work out in terms of the uh, amplitude. So our uh, prescription was that we add. You have to add counter terms. So you, just the just the theory that you have to begin with is not enough. You have to add counter terms to it, or you can. Think infinite, that, but, but, but what do you mean counter terms with finite shift? So you have to add certain terms to begin with. So the theory that you started out with is not the 
is not actually the full theory or the starting theory. You should have actually have more terms to begin with. Which with anything, with anything cancels, coefficients? Let me finish. Uh, which precisely cancels these divergent potentially terms which, which messes up with your core. So you can do this consistently. It was some time back, so I don't remember the exact detail. But the idea, and this kind of goes back to what maybe what Philip mentioned. So the idea is that you, you do not start with just the theory that you have, but you actually have some other terms, which when you take everything into consideration, the final product still continues to have only a single pole or no pole. So this, this problem of um, you know, introducing ghosts at loop level you can uh, come up with a prescription which cancels at every loop. At every loop, it cancels these, uh, these issues so that- No, but the, the, the issue is whether the counter terms that I'm trying to ask you, that you're talking about, do they have infinite coefficients, cutoff dependent coefficients or not? No, they then don't. You, right, then, then it's no problem. It's when you have counter terms, you don't have a really finite theory. You need counter terms with infinite coefficient. Infinite mean, means cutoff dependent. Mm -hmm. Then this become independent couplings and you do what you just said, you need, that's what we call fine tuning. You have to carefully adjust these coefficients, right? right. Which in principle are totally independent because they have you know, their own independent coupling because it yeah. runs, you know, right? That's the issue with these theories that Leonardo was talking about and Ilya was referring to and I was referring to. If you have a canonical, what I call a canonical type of molecular theory, which is what you're talking about, then you do exactly what you do, what you said, but that's finite, finite shifts. You do that in field theory anyway, right? If I compute, you know, the loop contribution to the Higgs mass, right? Then I have to readjust my vacuum by, you know, right. in finite theory, it will be a finite adjustment, right? And there is, that's not fine tuning. Fine tuning is when you have independent right. new counter yeah. couplings that you have to very carefully adjust, adjusting the cutoff, in other words, how they behave to cancel the, uh, the thing, that's, that's the difference. And this is what Ilya was referring to, if I'm correct. So I think the 15 minutes have passed. Yeah. This <laughs> Maybe was we can close with this last minute, just saying one thing about, yeah, since there was this no local session, I think we spoke a lot about mathematics during this last session, especially about these four factors. But I think that one problem that, I mean, should, we should have also uh, emphasized that basically, we have so much freedom in the choice of these four factors. Okay, it seems that we don't have any guide, any I don't know guidance from principle to fix principle. this. Yeah, some fundamental principle to fix that. Maybe one is only safety because they have an equation to solve. They say maybe you will get some effective action which is not local. But otherwise, I mean, I don't see any fundamental principle which can give some kind of analytic form factor and can give nice properties. I don't know, like if the, any think string field theory can suggest about form factors. I mean, this is something we had brief discussion in uh, after the string field theory session, but uh, I don't know. Maybe the, uh, this theory. problem which you said, I'm sorry to interrupt, is also there in string theory. You can look into the, when you look into the, the level of world sheet and level amplitude, you will see that there are uh, the there's a long list of uh, green function which you can write it down. So it's not so, bad in some sense. But I, don't, I don't know in city, but uh, maybe there they have I know, a principle, they have something which they maybe don't know how to compute, but maybe they have some principle, I don't know. But at least in our case, we just say, okay, we want ghost free form factor, we put them by hands. Okay, that's what we do. So uh, we have a comment from Gianluca. Yes. Yeah, but uh, there are uh, <clears throat> some, um, um, there is some guidance, uh, for instance, uh, um, uh, if you want uh, um, uh, to have, uh, uh, not to have a, a Shapiro time advance, uh, then that restricts uh, the choice of form factors a bit. Uh, and also if, 
you want to, to this is more technical. If you want to rewrite uh, the problem of initial conditions uh, in terms of diffusion equations, then uh, if you ask uh, that your diffusion equations are second order, that also restricts uh, your uh, choice of form factors. I mean, there are many small mathematical things that uh, can restrict uh, really the choice, although it, you never reach uh, to uh, one choice uh, good for all. But um, yeah, this is just a comment on. on Maybe if I can just uh, finish by first. sharing one paper from the 49. Okay, I just want to share it because it's the only one where I see some kind of like physical, not even physical, I mean, at least some guidance, which can be wrong, of course. But there was, I don't know, because I think no one knows this paper because I found it only a few years ago, a couple of years ago. It's this paper by Max Bohr, okay, by uh, reciprocity, reciprocity theory of elementary particles. Okay, now I don't know. I never reproduced computation in this paper. Basically, what he says is that, okay, let's assume as a fundamental principle that this kind of transformation, which is reciprocity transformation, is true in nature, okay? Then, if this is true, what he shows, of course, now I don't know if his claim is true or not. I never, I never checked the computation. But what he says is that basically, you, by starting with, from the principle, you generate no locality, like exponential of box. Okay, and what he says here as a final statement, Max Born says, uh, it appears latest part in the literature, uh, while in the re re reciprocity theory, it is a necessity. So he said that no locality, it is a necessity once you put as a first principle this uh, reciprocity transformation, okay, reciprocity invariance. So I don't know, I will just to share, I mean, we, uh, but it would be nice to find really. I don't know how, I mean, some guidance to really fix these form factors for people that work in a lot of theories, okay? So yeah, this was the last comment, but uh, I think we are uh, now uh, quite late. Uh, of course, discussion can continue, but I would close anyway the, uh, this uh, official discussion, and I will also stop the recording, actually. So- yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm three hours late for lunch, so I'll say goodbye. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, thank you everyone for a very vigorous discussion and that was a great paper i really like it. i have to look that up uh, yeah actually i will send maybe i will put yeah, in the chat I now want to talk about position and momentum well, we we can include that in the summary of today that mm -hmm. paper <laughs> yeah, it's the only one i found right good night have a good sleep uh, uh, <laughs> and uh, we would like to thank <laughs> Uh, great, great thanks to uh, Tirto uh, for uh, um, managing a very nice and uh, great yeah, discussion. Totally easy, right? Many yeah, yeah, I know. Okay, so we close officially <laughs> this uh, <laughs> this discussion, but we still here maybe. Okay, after. Okay, bye bye.